What up, everybody? Instructor Beats back again here with our fractions unit. Today we're going to talk about area models and number lines. So let's split it up and see what our objective is today. Ooh, nice confetti. Today I will be able to understand what a fraction is and be able to represent them with an area model and a number line. All right, so first of all, what is a fraction, right? What's our math vocabulary for this lesson? A fraction is an equal part of a whole, okay? A lot of you guys have had interactions with fractions, but what do we mean when we say an equal part of a whole, okay? So here we have a number, we have 221, and if we wrote it using base 10 blocks, right, you'd have your two hundreds, you'd have your two uh, bars or your two tens right here, and then you'd have a one little cube for the ones place. When we're talking about a fraction, we want, want to, to zoom, zoom in on that one and we're gonna really look at splitting up this one whole, okay? So when we're talking about a fraction, we're talking about splitting this one whole into equal groups. So this is how you're gonna see a fraction being written, right? You have a number, you have a line, and then you have another number. The top number on a fraction is called our numerator. The bottom number on our fraction is called a denominator. And I remember that D for down, or the bottom of the fraction, right? Denominator, and then numerator is just the other one. The denominator is going to tell us how many pieces, right? So how many equal pieces our whole is split up into. Our numerator is going to tell us how many pieces are shaded in that fraction, or how many pieces are we talking about. That's what a fraction is. That's the two parts of a fraction, and that's what they mean. Let's take a look at a couple examples. So here we have a fraction three-fourths. Our denominator tells us that our whole is gonna be split into four equal groups, and our numerator tells us how many are gonna be shaded. If you look right here, we have three different area models. We wanna circle the ones that show three-fourths. So here I see that I have four equal pieces and I have three shaded in, but you can notice that this part is not the same size as this part. So this does not represent three-fourths because it did not have equal parts. Remember, fractions have to be equal. Here we have a pizza, let's say, and we split our pizza into four different equal groups. I see that. And then I shaded in three of them. So this, in fact, does show three fours. And then here maybe you eat at Jet's Pizza, right, where they have rectangular square pizzas. And again, you can see that there are four pieces that this whole split up into, that they're equal, and that three of them are shaded. So this also represents three fours. The key thing about fractions is they are equal groups. All right, so here we wanna represent one third. So here I have, some people call this a Hershey bar, some people call it a tape diagram, some people just call it an area model, but this is equal to one whole, right? Just like 221, this is the rectangle that would represent one. My denominator, right, denominator D, tells me that I want to split this into three equal groups. So to make three equal groups, and again, I'm not perfect, but I'm gonna do my best, so it might not be exactly perfect, but you can see those are pretty equal. Here's a key thought. Does it matter where it's shaded or does it matter how many are shaded? So I know my numerator is one, which means I need to shade one of these pieces. If I shade it here, that represents one third. If I shade my one piece in the middle, guess what? Nothing's changed. This is still one third. So it doesn't matter which part of the fraction is shaded. It just matters how many of the parts are shaded. I could also shade it over here, and this would also be one third, all right? So again, key thinking, this can be very important. It doesn't matter where the numerator is shaded, it just matters how many pieces are shaded. Now the thing about fractions is too, it doesn't matter what the whole looks like. So the whole is not always going to be a rectangle. It could be a circle, it could be a square, it could be a triangle, right? But the, what matters is that you're splitting them into three equal parts. So I could split this circle. Now thirds are kind of hard for me to do. Okay, but I'm gonna do my best. I could split this circle into three equal parts and then shade in one of them and that could represent one third. Or I could even shade this square into three equal groups and shade in one of them, which I'm not gonna do because I can never quite split a square into thirds correctly. But it doesn't matter what the whole looks like as long as we split it into equal groups and it doesn't matter where it's shaded, it only matters how many pieces we are shading. Now we can also represent fractions on number lines, okay? So here I have the area model and again, I wanna uh, represent two thirds with this, okay? So I'm gonna split this area model into three equal groups as equal as I possibly can make them. 
for someone not neat like myself. And I'm going to shade in two of those pieces, right? So I have two thirds. I could also show two thirds on my number line. So we know that this area model was equivalent to one hole, okay? So if our number line is also equivalent to one hole, that means it's gonna go from zero to one. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna split my number line into three equal pieces. So right underneath where I split my area model, I'm gonna split that up right here. And now you can see I have one, two, three equal groups. And I want to shade two of them. So if I start at zero and I shade in this space, that's one third. And if I shade in another space, that would be two thirds. As a matter of fact, I like to label these. So here we have zero, here would be one third, here would be two thirds, and here would be one whole. Or you could also write that as a fraction, three out of three, okay? So if I wanted to shade two thirds on a number line, I would shade in two of my pieces. So anything you can do on this area model, you can also do on the number line. All right, let's do this one together. Let's make sure this one, this one is in our notes. So here I wanna do three fourths. So my denominator, right, the bottom part, the down part of my fraction tells me I wanna split four equal groups. So I'm gonna split it into half first. Sorry, I meant to label this as one over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and label my number line as zero and one as well. I'm going to split this part into half. And if I split this part into half, I have now made, I know it's a little crooked, but four equal pieces. So I'm gonna do the same thing on my number line. Okay, wherever I split my area model, I'm gonna split that. Then I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna split this part in half and split this part in half. In here I have zero. This would be one out of four. This would be two out of four. This would be three out of four. This would be one whole or four out of four. So I've now split my holes into my denominator, four equal pieces, and I wanna shade three of them. So I'm gonna shade one, two, three, and I'm gonna shade three on my number line, okay? So I'm gonna start at zero, and I'm gonna count over one space, two spaces, three spaces, and I'm gonna shade my spaces in. For the number line, you're shading in your spaces, not your dashes. This is where two-fourths is. So we need to shade this space, just like we did on our area model, to get to that point. And I need to do one more, and I have now represented three-fourths in an area model end on a number line. All right, so I want you to try this number line by yourself now, okay? So go ahead and draw a number line. You can draw the area model above it if it's gonna help you, but if you've gotten to the point where you think you can do the number line by yourself, go ahead and push pause, try it out, and then push play to see how you did. So hopefully you just push play. What I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna label zero in one hole right here, and I'm going to split this number line into eight. So first I'm gonna split it into half. I'm gonna split each of those halves into half. That's gonna make four equal pieces. Now again, you're not counting the lines, you're counting the spaces between the lines. So some people would think this was one, two, three. This isn't thirds, this is fourths because you have one, two, three, four spaces. Now I need eight, so I'm gonna split each of those into half. And that leaves me with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight equal pieces and my numerator is three. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and label my number line. This is four eighths, or you could label it as one half. This would be one whole, or eight over eight. And so now I need to shade in three of these spaces. So I'm gonna count one, two, three, and then I'm gonna shade in all the way to three fourths. So this is three eight, or sorry, oops, three. I meant to put an eight right there. I'm going to shade all the way to three eighths. So this is how you would represent three eighths on a number line. So hopefully we reviewed what a fraction was for you. And then we showed you how to put it on an area model. And then really putting it on a number line is probably the harder thing to do. So we really focused on putting it on a number line today to represent that fraction. Fractions have to be equal groups. You can do them on an area model or a number line. It's the exact same thing, just a different way to look at it. We appreciate you checking us out. We know there's lots of different options online. Thank you again. We hope that you'll like, comment, subscribe. Let us know where you're watching from. We appreciate you again. Instruct Beats, out.